Good evening, folks. It's Dinah with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Wednesday, May 28th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. A strong G3 geomagnetic storm just kicked off and is in progress. If you are in the northern states, I would suggest if it's not cloudy, to go out and look up. We've also got a town in Switzerland. A Swiss village has been buried by a glacier collapse, burying 90% of the town. Bad news there. And the first tropical storm of the season now in the eastern Pacific and headed towards Baja. Buckle up, Buttercup. A lot to talk about. Keep calm. It's boom time. All, all fl flights are grounded at, well, Dallas-Fort Worth International. They have been ordered to stay on the ground due to large thunderstorms today in the area. The FAA announced a, groups, uh, a group stop. That's a ground stop on Wednesday. They got that wrong. Which is expected to last until early afternoon at the major hub. The FAA said there was a medium probability they would extend the ground stop due to inclement weather in the area. The Texas City was hit with a flood watch on Memorial Day after more than two inches of rain deluged the area. And millions of people in California have been told to stay out of the sun for two days. But it's summer, so it's only going to get hotter. And what are we talking about? We have a brief heat wave here that's going to be showing up. Watch the map here, 93 in the valley there. And then 102, 102 Friday and Saturday here this weekend in California, all the way, 100 degrees, all the way down to southern Arizona. Let's move it through here. It's going to be Saturday into Sunday, 106 for the Southern Valley in California there. And then 102 on Monday. And then it's going to moderate. But as we get to the second week of June, that heat's going to kick up again. Take a look at this. Well, where was that? All right, we hit the button. Jesus. Yeah, it's going to be 100, 104 here on June 7th, 100 on June 6th, 93 on June 4th. And so by the time we get to the first week of June, another heat wave will hit that region and it's going to be lighting up southern Arizona as well to over 100 degrees on June 7th, as well as June 8th and June 9th. Look at that, 109 in the valley, 105 in southern Arizona. And that is June 9th, coming soon for a heat wave boom. And it looks like it's going to be over by then. We'll take a quick look over here at Tornado HQ Live, live severe weather map, and we currently have seven severe weather warnings uh, across the southern U.S., including the most recent, a special marine warning, which is going to be off the coast there of Louisiana. We also have multiple uh, severe weather threats, including severe thunderstorm warnings through Oklahoma and Texas, as well as Mississippi, and those will continue to move east here. These storms as well as this front in the central U.S. will be dipping down into Oklahoma and into Arkansas. So heed the warnings. Check out Tornado HQ for live severe weather updates. Here is the seven-day graphical tropical outlook, and we are looking at Tropical Depression 1-E. Holy macaroni. This is advisory one as well. Maximum sustained winds at 35 miles per hour. Central pressure is at 1,006. And this is going to be making its way up towards Baja over the next one, two, three, four days before it really impacts uh, that region. According to the current models, it will dissipate. It's going to uh, experience some shear here and have very little impact as far as landfall, which is good news there. And here is the full forecast, severe thunderstorms and heavy rainfall in the central and southern plains through tonight. Severe thunderstorms capable of very large hail, damaging wind gusts, and a few tornadoes will continue through tonight across parts of the central and southern plains. Heavy rain will pose a threat for flash flooding across portions of central and coastal Texas as well. Thunderstorms may also cause isolated wind damage in the southeast. Heed the warnings and go to weather.gov and click on your county for more information. 
A quick look at the GFS model shows those areas of pop-up storms and how it may explode here over Kansas overnight. And then by morning, take a look at this. Thursday into Friday, we're going to have some southeast and southern spiciness. Overall, through the weekend, it's going to be quite low-level activity, and you can see that tropical storm bombing out and then weakening rapidly as it moves towards Mexico down there in the bottom here. But as we enter the end of the model here, we have the first Atlantic storm on the list here, blasting up through the Gulf and maybe, just maybe, hitting Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis, mid-June. That would be a mid-June boom and the first hurricane of the Atlantic season, as predicted. Buckle up, buttercup. Just for shits and giggles, let's take a look at the total accumulated precipitation. You can see there's going to be some major flooding in the coming days. Those areas in purple. Holy macaroni. And there's that tropical storm moving up there. In the south, uh, do we have any snowfall? Well, yes, indeed we do. We have a storm coming through here June 3rd, 4th, and 5th on the models. Still on the models bringing some high elevation snow and some much needed moisture here uh, around Monday, fun day for the Four Corners region. Now let's talk about that tragedy. A glacier collapse buries 90% of a Swiss village and one person is missing. The village is Blotten and it has been evacuated nearly a month ago due to a rock slide and imminent movement of the upper mountain. And a huge chunk of a glacier in the Swiss Alps broke off Wednesday afternoon, causing a deluge of ice, mud, and rock to bury part of a mountain village evacuated earlier this month due to the risk of a rock slide. So luckily, most of the town have been evacuated. And here is the before picture of Blatten. And this is the, the channel where you can see other landslides have occurred. This is a normal occurrence. This one happening to be one of the biggest in recent memories. And there is the aftermath of that valley. Yeah. Here is before and after of the Blatten Valley. And we do have some footage here that we can show you of that upper glacier and landslide releasing. And thank God there was just one person down there. And they are now missing, unfortunately. So this is a major catastrophic geologic event in the form of uh, a landslide and destabilization of a known region where landslides occur. Geologists have been monitoring this region for months and had determined that the speed of the slip up here, there was slow slip, was accelerating, and they evacuated the town. Thank God they did, or this would have been a mass casualty event. You can follow us on Twitter for all of the updates and all of these types of posts during the day. Now, Willie soon emailed us earlier today. He posted seven hours ago uh, the latest updates at Ceres Science. Evaluating climate models and observations, Ceres pre presentations to the Heritage Foundation on May 13th, 2025. And in Willie Soon's video, which you can watch here at the link, which will be in the description box, global warming is due to urban heat island and the sun, not cow farts um, so go check out uh, this new blog post here over at Siri Science watch the videos support our good friend Willie Soon and the deconstruction of the climate alarmist narrative seismic update we do have a coronal hole stream striking earth pushing us into G3 geomagnetic storm which pushes us into seismic alert you can see a low level uptick in moderate activity worldwide there are quakes everywhere along fault lines the good news is that no big quakes have occurred 
And no big volcanic eruptions as we enter the next grand solar minimum. Quadruple volcanoes on a secret Soviet military base is linked to climate-altering eruptions 200 years ago during the last grand minimum. And this is just recent information coming out. Here is a 2024 satellite photo showing four, one, two, three, four, end-to-end volcanoes perfectly spaced out along the Russian island of Simushir. One of these peaks was the site of a surprise eruption that temporarily cooled the Earth and the Northern Hemisphere in 1831. And it was the big one. In 1831, the Northern Hemisphere climate cooled by an average of 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a big drop, bigger than Pinatubo, coinciding with reports of gloomy and bleak weather and the sun turning different colors. We've been warning about this for a decade on both of our channels. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when, and we're long overdue for another one of these big booms. Scientists knew a massive eruption caused this strange event, but the volcano responsible had remained a mystery until uh, new researchers looked into the ice core data and they pinpointed this using isotopic analysis and the ash fall. So that climate changing eruption occurred up here in the Kamchatka on the Russian island of Simoshir. Will it happen again? Well, take a look at this caldera. That's the one that cooled the earth. And there's other bigger ones here as well. Those are VEI-6. That's a VEI-6 caldera if I've ever seen one. Worldwide Volcano News. Shortlist today for the 28th of May. Liwotolo, 5,000-foot blast reported. Santa Guito, volcanic ash emissions recorded as well. Ibu, 7,000 feet today. Kluchiskoy, 20,000-foot blast there. Raventador, 15,000-foot blast. And we also have Semadu, who knew, now you do, puffing and passing today. Ibu to 7,000 feet. Dukono to 8,000. Sangay to 21,000 foot. And wrapping up the list is Shivalush with the 14,000-foot puff. And that brings us to space weather, where a G3 geomagnetic storm has just kicked off. You can see the aurora exploding over Canada. KP hasn't picked it up yet. We're going to be popping up here to KP6 in just a few moments. And they, that's reflected here on the detailed forecast where they have us high G3 geomagnetic storm now ongoing. Get outside and look up, kids. This is all due to a fact. Let's refresh this. Oh, it's getting weaker. So it was impulsive, as we can see here from the telemetry. An impulsive increase from 400 kilometers per second up to 700 kilometers per second in plasma speed following this gradual density increase and a shift in the BZ to the south. So hopefully this will continue overnight and we'll get some spectacular aurora for all, you all to watch. So get out and look up. Thanks to... The coronal hole stream coming from this trans-equatorial giant. Now, a new article coming out. Archaeologists suggest ancient Egyptians built the Great Pyramids using high-tech machines thousands of years ahead of its time. An overlooked trench, a mysterious enclosure, and a theory that rewrites how Egypt's first pyramid was built. The new research hints at a forgotten technology buried beneath Saqqara. It's a radical alternative to the ramp hypothesis, and this is rediscovering Gieser el Madur's purpose. This team proposes that the enclosure function as a check dam, capturing sediment and floodwaters from the Absir Wadi, using satellite imagery and evolution. Elevation data, the researchers demonstrated that the structure meets key design criteria for regulated water flow with its thick, thick limestone walls and sediment trapping fills arranged like laid embankments. Its capacity could have been 440,000 cubic meters. Now, what would they have used this water for? Well, a ram pump and some type of unknown ancient technology that could be used as a hoist to bring large blocks up and build a pyramid through a ram pump. You picking it up?
We just put it down. All the links will be below. And I think this is one of the dumber theories. You know what's not dumb? Hedging your bets on the future collapse of fiat currency. The best way to do that is to dump your money into precious metals. They've gone up 50% in the last year. We're talking silver and gold. And we partnered with GoldCo, an industry leader from precious metal IRAs to direct purchases of gold and silver. They've helped thousands of Americans diversify and protect their retirement savings. Requ request your free 2025 gold and silver kit. There's no obligation. Just fill out the, the form and be on your way. You can get up to 10% in an instant match in free silver if you convert your IRA from fiat currency over to gold and silver. With a qualified account, you also receive free shipping, free access to a library of retirement resources, and the highest price buyback in the industry. Gold Co. is the number one rated precious metals IRA to direct purchases on the internet. So why would you trust anyone else? Check out Gold Co. and requ request your free 2025 gold and silver kit now. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please hit the thumbs up, share this video with like-minded people, and subscribe to the channel, please. Half of you watching are unsubscribed, and we need you to hit that button to help the channel grow. We love each and every one of you. Be safe, and that is a boom. Mm -hmm.